Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. Before I get into that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for the wonderful comments. I really do appreciate it. The first article that I have tonight is the Micro Intifada, how American protesters are being trained in militancy. And when I read this, it brought back memories. Students participating in the Gaza Solidarity encampments at universities across the country are being taught to become militants according to nine manuals obtained by the free press. Many of the manuals, which are being shared via phone group chats with students across the country, encourage militancy and instruct protesters to break laws, seize buildings, vandalize them, and then use tactics to evade police detection and arrest. One guide, called De-Arrest Primer, teaches protesters to physically resist arrest or, in some cases, assault police officers or throw projectiles at them to protect fellow comrades from arrest. Each de-arrest, the guide states, is a micro-intifada which can spread and inspire others until we may finally shake off this noxious ruling order altogether. And the, the article goes on to show you all the different guides and talk about what they do. But when I read this, I thought, shades of the 1960s, because that's exactly what happened in the 1960s. The communists printed out manuals explaining to the protesters how to act and what to do to evade detection and, and avoid arrest, and they followed those manuals. And they had a powerful effect on the press, not so much on the American people, <clears throat> but they they definitely had an <laughs> excuse me. They definitely had an effect on the war. They managed to get um, a Congress elected that abandoned South Vietnam. So when I see this going on, I think you know here we are going all over again. The Marxists are doing their best to take over this country. They hate America and they want to destroy America. And if you don't believe that, you're just not paying attention. So that's the first article that I have. The second one is a really interesting one because it involves someone who I have very little respect for, R. Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton questions Democrats' sanctimony on January 6th amid pro-Hamas protests making NS MSNBC talking heads squirm. <clears throat> MSNBC's Morning Joe ran the risk of bringing Al Sharpton on Thursday to discuss the anti-Israel protests on university campuses. In a moment of rare clarity on the network, Sharpton indicated that Democrats who have long sounded off about the January 6th protests, which allegedly resulted in less than $2.7 million in damage, may not have the moral high ground in light of this latest rash of violence. Any time what you're pro protesting for becomes secondary to what you are doing, then you're really not protesting for it, Sharpton told co-hosts Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough, as footage of Los Angeles Police Department's overnight efforts to shut down the illegal encampment at the University of California, Los Angeles, played on the screen. The liberal activists suggested that the key is drawing attention to a cause, not becoming the cause. It's about them, Sharpton continued, referencing the pro-Hamas protesters. I think that they've lost the message. And the talking heads were going along with his statement. They're nodding in, in agreement. And then Al says this, How do Democrats, how do all of us on that side say January 6th was wrong if you could have the same pictures going on on college campuses, said Sharpton. Brzezinski interjected, saying, Good Lord, don't make a parallel with January 6th. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's not make a parallel with what happened in Portland where they attacked and firebombed a U.S. courthouse and nothing was done. And by the way, I heard today on the news that uh, the uh, district attorney, Alvin Bragg, you know, the guy that is trying Trump for 
having paid off or, or for having, uh, you know, whatever you call it, paid hush money to uh, someone who was claiming to have had sex with him. Uh, that same Alvin Bragg has already stated that he has no intention of prosecuting the people that were arrested at uh, Columbia. So you're just giving them carte blanche to do whatever they want. They, they, they destroyed a building, but that's okay, I guess. Okay, the next article I have. Exclusive DOJ's Kristen Clark testified that she was never arrested. Court records and text messages indicate she was. So this is an interesting case where, uh, and I'll put the links in the description like I always do, but this is an interesting case where she testified under oath that she had never been arrested, but actually she had been, but her record was expunged. I don't know if she thought it wouldn't be found out or if she thought that because it was expunged it doesn't count or what, but she really should have disclosed that and now it's it's putting her uh, her elevation to assistant district attorney in charge of civil rights at risk. The next article I have is called Censorship Battle Reaches New Heights and Land Down Under. This is for all my Aussie subscribers. I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on down there, but um, basically you had a, um, I think it was an Orthodox minister, was attacked by uh, someone yelling Allah Akbar. And there, it was on video because the church service was being broadcast. And those videos were disseminated on the internet as they always are and the Australian e-safety commissar or commissioner uh, demanded that they be removed and most of the uh, social media companies removed them but Elon Musk said no I'm not going to do that they did geo block the footage from Australian users so you can't see it in Australia but Australia is trying to tell Elon Musk that he has to remove it for the entire world. And, you know, you just have to wonder, why are they trying to hide this? What is wrong with people knowing that a minister was attacked? I don't, I don't get it. Why is this bad? Do you really think we need to be protected from seeing violence? Seriously, you think we're children? It's just ridiculous. But so much of what we do today is ridiculous. So what the heck is that? Okay. Um, this last thing I inserted at the last minute because I thought it was important you see this. Uh, this is a story, and I'll put the link in the description again. This is a story about a man who was a dentist in an Israeli prison. And because he was a dentist, he got to work on the teeth of all the prisoners, including both Fatah and Hamas prisoners. And he noticed that the Hamas prisoners were very, he calls it disciplined, and that they, um, they, didn't, they, they didn't sway at all from their beliefs. But the Fatah prisoners, they were fine with, you know, whatever, watching TV after uh, hours and that kind of stuff, which I don't know why that's bad, but uh, anyway, they were. But uh, someone noticed that he was familiar with what was going on, and so they recruited him into the uh, Israeli intelligence service. And he got to interview quite a few of the... Um, uh, what do I call them? I don't want to call them important. Uh, quite a few of the leadership of Hamas, both Hamas and Fatah. And the biggest leader of Hamas was a man named Sinwar. And you can see in the title, he asked Sinwar, is it worth 10,000 innocent Gazans dying for his cause? And he said, even 100,000 is worth it. So, when you see what's going on over there now, 
and you hear them telling you about the thousands and thousands of people that have been killed, Hamas has no problem with that at all. <laughs> None whatsoever. He just said it. A hundred thousand be fine with him. And we're not even close to that. And that's assuming that we take Hamas's numbers for the number of dead at face value, which would be silly. So, if the people that are protesting for Hamas would just stop and think for one minute, if you're gay and you're supporting Hamas, there's something wrong with your head. If you went to Palestine, they would kill you. How can you support that? They'd kill you simply because you're gay. How can you possibly? I mean, I don't understand. How do you how do you resolve that cognitive dissonance? How do you get yourself to the point where you're willing to support someone that if they had the opportunity, they would kill you? I don't get it. Someone please explain it to me. In the meantime, I'll put all those links in the description and I'll pray for you. I pray that you live an abundant life, that you are healthy and that you live a long time and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he will do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all, <coughs> excuse me, I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam era vet out.